Well, we've got ABS and all the GT3s here have ABS. So to an extent, it is about hitting the pedal as hard as you can initially, and you almost get it into the ABS. And that can be anything from 100 to 120 bar of pressure, which is quite a lot if you work it out in terms of kilos, you're hitting the pedal every lap. Um, but then it's not just a case of staying buried in, into the brake pedal all the way into the corner. Even with ABS, you need to start modulating a little bit. And that's what I was mentioning earlier on to Ivor. Even when his peak brake is quite good, he then starts bleeding out of the brake quite early, which then means you're not keeping the weight transferred over the front. So as you're turning in, the front's wanting to understeer. If you can trail brake in, that actually keeps that weight transfer over the front tires. So it's actually pushing them into the tarmac. So you're actually able to carry more speed to the apex. So is there any time when you don't press the brake quite so hard? Yeah, I mean like Puon, for example, double apex downhill left-hander, you're, you're sort of, you're, you're giving that, I'll give you an example. So for example, Ivor and I going into La Source, we're braking, our brake pressure is about 110 bar, for example. But going into Puon, our brake pressure is 60. So why are you a little softer on the brake just there? It's because you're steadying the car, so there you want the car to not have too much pitch into it. Because if you turn into Puon and you're pitching it in, it unbalances the car and then you can get the rear moving. The attitude of the car, the rake of the car, the dynamic rake of the car is critical for downforce. Because obviously the more rake you've got in the car, the more downforce you've got. But also, mechanically, if you've got a lot of rake in the car and a high rear ride height, the rear is going to roll around a lot going into the corners. So you could have a too much front downforce, too much centre of pressure forward by having too much rake, and then you have an unstable rear. So there's a, there's a trade-off. But if you're going into the corner with dynamic rake, initially you want the weight on the front. The minute you've got to get the grip to turn in, the minute you're turned into the corner, there's a, there's a tight rope that you're walking where you still want front grip, but you don't want to lose rear grip. So what you then do is you just get into a little bit of throttle once the car's in, and that little bit of throttle just starts sitting the rear ever so slightly, and that gives you grip in the rear. If you overdo that, it'll push understeer, what we call power understeer, and it'll just power off the corner with understeer. If you wait too long to put that little bit of throttle in, it could float to off-throttle roll over steer. So you're, you're treading a tightrope at that point, and that last little bit of brake pressure, how you release it, that moment of coasting when you're not on the brake or not on the throttle, and then how you pick up on the initial throttle, that's the delicate bit. It's not just smash the brake pedal, turn in, smash the throttle. There is real finesse in those moments, and it's how you connect it that allows you to carry speed through the corner and maintain a higher minimum speed, which gives you a good lap time.